guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be planting here in the raised bed garden and out in the cut flower garden. So we've got some cabbage and broccoli seedlings that we started just a few weeks ago. They look great. Uh, so we're gonna get those in the ground as well as some spinach and kale seeds. But we're also gonna focus when we get out to the cut flower garden on putting in some cool season annuals that will bloom early next season and some hardy perennials. So here's our golden acre cabbage looking beautiful. These are gonna go out in the cut flower garden because they will need more space. And then the bell star broccoli will go up here in a three by six bed. I think there's roughly 30-ish plants here. Um, up here in the raised beds, we're also gonna be planting some Bloomsdale long-standing spinach and some Lacinato kale. For perennial flowers, we have Echinacea purpurea, which is your classic purple cone flower, sugar plum, foxglove, a couple varieties of Eryngium or sea holly. One's called steel blue, the other is white glitter. Had great luck with both of those showy milkweed and some lupins, Texas blue bonnet lupins. And then for cool season annuals, we have white finch orlea, Centaria florist blue boy, which is a bachelor's button, a few different varieties of larkspur, corn cockle, ocean pearls, a few different varieties of love and a mist or nigella, We've got Buplurum, Green Gold, and White Dill Ami. What we're doing with these flower seeds is we're emulating what would happen out in nature. You know, these plants grow, they set seed, drop the seed on the ground, and then they grow again. So we may see some action on these this season yet because we've got we've got some heat. It's a beautiful day today. It doesn't look like it's very warm and it's it is fairly cool out here, but next week we have temperatures in the 90s. So it's kind of the perfect time to get them in the ground, especially these hardy perennials. Let them have a chance to germinate, create little plants, and then they'll get covered in snow. They'll be cold and chilly, but they can handle it. And then they will continue growing next year. And we kind of have a leg up and a head start on next year's crop. And with these cool season annuals, most of these seeds need a long cold period in order to germinate and be productive. So we're giving them that out in nature rather than putting the seeds in our refrigerator and seeding them next year. This way, hopefully we have a head start again with these flowers and we've got flowers earlier. Now I do have experience with quite a number of these self seeding and coming up in the garden. This year I've really enjoyed that aspect. You know, we have calendula, nicotiana, bachelor's buttons, nigella, larkspur, uh, orlea. Uh, what else did we have come back up? Feverfew, Mignonette, Bells of Ireland, some nasturtiums, and I just let them do their thing out there. So those plants grew last year and then set their seed and it's the babies, you know, it's the seed that they set that's coming back up this year. So what I'm doing today, even though I still have some larkspur and things out there, I am going to kind of amp up the amount that I have because I would love to have more early season flowers. And I did notice that they bloomed way earlier last year for me because they were self seeded from the year before, as opposed to seeding them out late late winter early spring it just seems like it takes them a lot longer now there are a lot of really in-depth videos about fall season planting annuals and there's quite a list you can google it for your area and see what flowers are appropriate for you to start at this time it's just kind of nice to have that leg up that head start and it also takes something off of your plate in the spring which is great too a little bonus we are going to start up here with our broccoli right over here oh russell decorum mr my goodness <laughs> okay we're gonna plant the broccoli in this three by six raised bed right here you can see that i already kind of took after the water and then i stopped and decided i would <laughs> film that part the last time we planted in here which was just a few weeks ago i uh, started replacing the drip system and any of the beds that were open enough for me to replace it in uh, and it's working a lot better so before i had a well i probably have a good example here yeah right here so before i had just this little adapter that went from hose to quarter inch and then i would just kind of like swoop my quarter inch around in the bed and it's just way too long of a round of quarter inch and the coverage is just not good so what i've done instead well let's see where i can find well right here is probably a pretty good example so what I've done instead is I changed the adapter from that quarter inch coming down into half inch instead. So I have a half inch supply line that runs the short distance of the bed and then I coupled into it with quarter inch couplers and ran off of it with individual pieces of quarter inch. So the coverage is just much better because the runs of quarter inch are a lot shorter. Let's just do a quick walkthrough so you can see what's already going on in this space. We've got leeks, celery and parsnips beautiful colette rose look at that cinnamon girl pumpkins planted mid-july look at that there's orange pumpkins all over 
this vine has struggled just a little bit. We'll have broccoli here today, a mazel basil, which the flavor does not change on this variety once it starts to bolt, which is amazing. With a lot of other varieties, the second they start to bolt, they get a little bit bitter, like the, change, the flavor changes a little bit. I love the fact that the amazel basil doesn't uh, because it's just a lot of work to keep on top of that. We've got a garden treasure tomato here. We've kept up on picking these for the most part. We've got a lot of tomatoes forming up though at the moment. Cilantro and basil, I'm gonna let the cilantro go to seed. Uh, nothing in here. I think we'll pop our kale probably in here today. A planter I need to swap out for fall plants here pretty soon. We've got a lavender here I'm going to plant out in the south garden. And then the portulaca. It's a healthy plant, but at this point when it's cool during the day, you know, it's overcast right now, the flowers don't open up. If it's nice and sunny and warm, those flowers open up and it's just like a yellow mass and it's pretty. But this is what it's kind of looking like a lot of the time now. We've got carrots going in here. There are some lettuce seedlings starting to pop up in here that we recently planted. Garden gem tomato. Zeolites calendula that we seeded last year. So this is a perfect example. And it just like, it's so healthy and so robust. It's amazing. I did plant a cucumber in here mid-July and then something ate it. So I came along, planted again about the second week of August and I'm starting to see little cucumbers on it. Same thing with our zucchini. I planted that, something ate it. So this one was planted second week of August. I've picked two zucchini off of it so far, and that's about the perfect amount for my family right there. We don't eat a ton of zucchini, but I still grow it because it's satisfying, I guess. It's kind of like radishes. Don't really love to eat radishes, but I plant them every year because they're fast and, I don't know, satisfying. Another calendula. We've got a little row of spinach. We're gonna plant more spinach right here today. I ran out of spinach seed the day I planted this row. We've got fresh cilantro coming up here. There is lettuce in this bed. I think I'm gonna reseed it though. Um, this bed has been staying so wet. I don't really know what's going on there. I might just toss some kale in here today or more spinach probably. Beautiful crop of carrots coming up in this bed. Really nice, happy with that. In this bed, we have another flower called Facelia that self-seeded itself. Another name for it is Bee's Friend. It comes out with these blooms that look like little fern, like the little swirly fern things. I don't, they're so pretty. Purple, the bees love it, but it does like to, like once you plant it, you'll have it forever. I've got some Oregon Sugar Pod pea plants that I put in mid-July. We've been picking on them. In fact, they're pretty clean right now. There's a little one right there, little one. And then I came along a couple weeks ago, found a spot along a drip line and popped more seeds so we could have another crop. And then we have the Beyond Pinked Caryopteris. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a brand new one, I think, for next year. Zone seven, though. It's not hardy in my zone. That's why I put it in containers in here so that I could pull it in somewhere protected. But I'm loving it and the bees are loving it. I think you can see there's one right, oop. Yep, couple on there. And the limelight hydrangea is looking awesome. The Colette is going nuts. <laughs> Look at it, oh my goodness. We did carve out this space so we could still walk under it. And then there's the west side garden coming along beautifully. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish up the drip system, get the broccoli in, the spinach and kale in, in this area, and then we'll head out to the big garden. done look at those cute little seedlings all tucked in so i did the biotone starter fertilizer planted them and then top dressed with a little bit of land and sea compost then i tested out the drip system it's all working great 
Oh, so exciting. And then I planted a few little lacinato kale seeds right in here, same process. And we got our spinach planted here and I went ahead and just tossed a bunch of spinach seed in that raised bed. You can see that it's quite shaded in that corner this time of year. Kind of perfect for greens. Okay, now we're gonna head out to the big garden and figure out where all of these seeds are gonna go. Okay, we're out here in the big garden. It's all looking really pretty out here this afternoon. In fact, this crop right up here of the, the zinnias and cosmos down that way and marigolds, the fresh ones we put out late in the season that I started from seed in the greenhouse, they just look so good. Oh, I love having them, especially right on the edge because you know our driveway is right here. So you get to see these fresh flowers. We don't have all that much space in here. Uh, compared to the amount of varieties I have. We're gonna do the best we can to squeeze all of these in here, but let me show you the spots that I do have open. The back part of this row is all cleaned out and it's already been amended with Biotone and Land and Sea, so it's looking perfection. So we'll put cabbage in here as far as it takes and then we'll put flowers in the rest of it. These cosmos are just about ready to pop. And then we've got this section right here. We did have some of the purple, sweet purple, white bicolor dianthus in here that were spent. We had red cabbage in here um, until recently. And we've got mahogany splendor hibiscus here. And then of course, this is our status. Dang, the status is amazing. We already cut all the status once before. And then we've got snapdragons and stuff looking a little bit tired, but there's still a lot of good blooms in there. The grass is looking spectacular. Oh my goodness, it's coming in beautifully. There's little patches and stuff, but for a brand new seeded area, amazing now this whole area is dahlias and the rest of it we've got it actually just watered in here so it's a little soggy so dahlias in this whole space and then peppers there's two cucumber plants and rhubarb at the end of that one zinnias here which have been kind of slowly fizzling and so we've been kind of pulling them they're looking a little bit haphazard at the moment but that's okay kind of how a lot of things look this time of year and then of course we've got the maize garden here which is completely full on this side more zinnias and then we've got butternut squash we've also got some cosmos in here amaranth uh, nasturtiums here which are looking beautiful look at those they're so pretty a bunch of celosia that's self-seeded in here. We do need to clean the beans out, so this will be another available space. So it's possible today we may not plant all the varieties I showed you. We'll just you know do what we can with the space we have and then fill in later in these other spaces. We've got strawberries here, which are still just rocking. Just rocking, it's just crazy. These are just the most productive plants ever. Look at this enormous berries. We've got carrots that self-seeded right here. And then this is where our potatoes were right here. And then we had sweet peas there. I'm trying to be a little bit careful about where I put things because it'd be easy just to go in and, you know, fill this whole section up right here. But I know next year, I don't wanna have anything growing on these panels at the time I need to put sunflowers in because I want to grow sunflowers on these panels and sunflowers again on this side, on these panels, because it creates a beautiful block right here along the lane. And I've already got a plan for what I'm gonna be planting in here in this whole section where the potatoes were later on this fall. So anyway, it's basically these sections over here. But just to give you an idea, over here we have the Bells of Ireland. <laughs> we never we never removed the first crop from this season. And then we've got new fresh stems coming up. There's also Clary Sage, make it closer. But look at the Bells of Ireland. Once you plant them, you will have them forever, forever. They're really pretty, but they have thorns. Underneath each one of these little bells, there are three little thorns. Before we go look at the clary sage, we've got beautiful craspedia. We've got some African daisies right here, which are amazing. Look at those. And they've done really well. And then I left this row of stock. I wanted to see what they would do once the weather turned uh, cooler and they are pushing fresh stems. So it'll be interesting to see what they do as it gets cooler and cooler. But around this way, you can see this clary sage. So another great one to put in that will self seed. There's more of it popping through here. Tons of bells of Ireland though, in this, this, this section. This would look much more kept if we would have uh, removed the first crop of blooms. This is from the first crop earlier this season, right here. And if you let them dry out, those thorns get pokier. We've got perennial uh, pincushion flowers. There's fama blue right here and there's fama white right here. And then there's some annual varieties right here. I let them go to seed at a certain point and we gather some of the seed. Um, in this space right here, we've got tons of larkspur seedlings coming up. 
and then right here is where the orlea usually comes up. You can see a little bit of it. I'm gonna tuck in a few more seedlings and I'm going to pull this. These are more Bells of Ireland and honestly, like I like things to self seed, but I don't use a tremendous amount of Bells of Ireland. So I wouldn't mind paring that section down a little bit. I think I'll toss a few more Orlea seeds in here, even though I know we've got what we need in here for another crop to come up. This Nicotiana right here, it's called Peach Screamer. It's gorgeous, self seeded right here. Isn't that incredible? And these Cosmos are up from last year in this spot. But we'll be focusing then on these two rows just for today, which is kind of good because it's getting close to dinner time. I'm gonna to need to go start dinner anyway. The afternoon kind of got away from us a little bit. We have other things going on and Benny's guys are leveling the area around the Hartley and it's quite exciting to watch that process go down. So anyway, let's start with the cabbage and then let's see what we should put in. Maybe some of those things that we don't have already. Maybe some bupleurum. We know we're gonna put in some orlea. We should see how we do with some echinacea and some foxglove. I think that would be really fun. And bupleurum and maybe corn cockles, we'll see. Also, for those of you who have those seed starting trays from Gardener Supply, they're 24 count trays. I don't know when they came up with this tool, but I used to use a little shovel to get my seedlings out and now they've got this, these tongs that are awesome. So you just stick them down in here and you can pinch and pull out your seedling without too much damage, which is awesome. Anyway. Let's do this. Okay, well we got four varieties of flowers planted and our cabbage. And I'm just leaving the hose strung out for now. I mean, this whole area is on drip, but I don't need to run the drip but every other day right now. But for seedlings, I need to water more often. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hand water those small areas where we've got seeds and seedlings. Uh, we've got the cabbage here. I spaced them about 18 inches apart, which I don't expect these cabbage to get as big as my normal cabbage do earlier on in the season but if they just form small heads, that would be perfect. Quite a number of them here. And then we had quite a number of echinacea seed and I didn't even bury them. They're supposed to have light to germinate. So those are just kind of at the top of the soil surface. They're kind of mixed in, they're the same color as the soil. So really hard to see them, but same with our foxglove down at the end. So we've got echinacea starting here and it goes all the way to right here. And then the rest of this row is the foxglove. And then right over here, we had enough lupin seed to do this whole section with lupins. It's gonna be so pretty. Okay, now if we pick our way across, or should I go around? I should probably go around. So right in here, I did toss in a few more of the white finch orlea just to bolster the amount that come up. Although that's usually not a problem. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today's project. I thought we had a little bit more space, <laughs> space to work with out here. Um, but once we get the beans cleared, we will have that space. And then we've got more projects to do out here. We'll do some more clearing and some more seeding. The beauty of the, these types of seeds is oftentimes, even if they don't germinate and start to grow, um, the seed will lay there through the winter and will germinate in the spring. Now you can't do this with things like zinnias and sunflowers, the mahogany splendor hibiscus that we have over here. Just look at that. Oh my goodness. This is a really good alternative for Japanese maple. If you love Japanese maples, but you have a hard time growing them, just grow this annual. It's super easy to grow from seed. It gets big in one season. I mean, it doesn't winter over, so it's something you have to replant, but worth it. 
so gorgeous. And I will bring you guys along for any other things that we do out here in the cut flower garden this fall in terms of seeding. And then of course you guys know that we are leaving our dahlias underneath the ground this year. It's a little scary, but honestly, you guys, I was looking online at some dahlias and thinking how fun it's going to be to try some new varieties out because we have, I've added like a very small handful of new varieties every year, uh, but it'll be fun to start with some new, some new colors and things like that. They're all so pretty though. All of them are. Oh, I mean, just the color, the structure. Mine are not as big as they were last year, but the flowers are producing just as many flowers. The plants are just more petite, which is weird, but I've heard the same thing from a lot of people in our area. Look at these. I love the collarette blooms. I think they are so gorgeous. And Penny Lane. I love this one. The Cafe Au Lait is looking gorgeous. And this one's really neat too. This one's called Gouda Shink. Isn't that cool? This one has a very slender uh, kind of tender branches. We could spend the whole rest of the day going through the dahlia varieties. They are so gorgeous right now. Oh my goodness. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you are starting some fall seeds in your garden, let me know what you're starting in yours because I think we can all learn from each other and uh, I would love to try some interesting things out this year. So anyway, thank you guys. See you in the next one. Bye.